Hello, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. This is Watchwoman 68, Noella Perry. Thank God for another day. Amen. Another day in the land of the living. Amen. So many people are leaving here. But I thank God. Hallelujah. He's given me another chance. Amen. Another chance to get right with him another chance to walk upright another chance to you know bring the word another chance amen to be a light in this dark world amen because as the church amen as the world is getting darker as the church our light is supposed to shine more amen hallelujah so i thank god for another opportunity amen to share the word amen and to walk in the light amen as he's in the light amen hallelujah tonight i want to ask you a question are you a thief? And some of you may be like, what is she talking about? I ain't no thief. Amen. Look at the look at the definition of thief. One that steals especially stealthily or secretly. One who commits theft or larceny. That's some definitions. And you know, as we think about a, a, a thief, you know, back, you know, a lot of times this was like a thief would come through the back door or the, the back window amen coming secretly a lot of them ain't doing that now they're coming through the front door they're coming through the front window coming in the front of your garage come on you might be right i've heard uh seen videos and seen uh read some articles of People were sitting in the, in, in, in the living room, amen, or in the dining room, and then somebody came through the door. Or somebody was trying to come through the window. I seen just recently they had, a, um, you know, there's a lot of owners, and uh, they're putting like a camera in front of their house. And when somebody tried to come to their house to, you know, to steal anything or to try to break in, the cam that, that there's a voice thing that will talk. Amen. And I seen it where the, when the person realized, well, maybe somebody's watching me, you know, they took off real quick. You know, so some of these, you know, some of these thieves, they're getting bold. They ain't come, most of them ain't coming through no back door now and ain't no back windows. Come on. They're coming through the, your front door and your front window. Amen. So tonight is a question. Are you a thief? Now we're not talking about a thief in the physical sense. We're talking about a thief in the spiritual sense. Are you trying to get into heaven the, the back door, the wrong way? Are you trying to get to God or through heaven, to heaven, another way except through Jesus Christ? Mm. You have to think about that. Now, in order for you to be able to answer that question, you got to go all the way back and think of when you, confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. I know many of us, we got saved when we were younger. Amen. A lot of people got saved, you know, as children, you know, um, school age children or pre-teenagers, uh, your parents, you know, family brought you to church and stuff. And, um, you know, when they, they did the altar call, they, some of them drag you to the front. Amen. Or some of you, they ask you, do you want to be saved? Do you want to know Jesus? And you walk down through the front. And I mean, that's good. But a lot of people have accepted Christ because somebody told them they weren't ready. Just like when you talk about baptism, um, I was baptized three times. The first time I was a little girl. Second time I can remember I was back in my country and I got baptized in the sea. I uh, can't remember exactly how old I was. I know I was a teenager, early teens, and I got baptized. And I'm talking about back in my country in Trinidad, when you got baptized, it was like a big thing. It was like a big procession. On. Come on. People walked there. It was a big crowd, and you walked down through the streets, amen, and, and the traffic had to wait, amen, and you walked down the street, and you sang songs, amen, and we got to the sea. You just held up traffic because this was a big thing. I don't know how it is right now because I haven't been there since 1988. But it was a big thing. It wasn't just like you, they dip you in the water and, you know, you know, right now you go into a baptismal pool and they dip you down the water and you bring you back up and, you know, they say prayer and they baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. And then after that, 
it, 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 that's it. Back in my country, that wasn't it. It was a big thing. They, I mean, they, they celebrated it. Um, and you know, when people give their life to Christ, we are supposed to celebrate. Somebody get baptized, you're supposed to celebrate that because so many people are not getting baptized. Although we know that baptism does not save you. Amen. But remember in Matthew 3, when Jesus got baptized, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he said, suffer it so to be, so for it fulfill all righteousness. So he was just showing us the way too. Amen. Giving us a guideline and showing us, amen, like this is a way to do it. But I mean, everybody that's saved is not baptized. Baptism is, it's an outward show for what may have happened in your heart. So when you go down in the water, even my six-year-old, she was asking me, she wanted to be baptized. But I didn't do it yet because I want to make sure she know what she's doing. Amen. Because like I said, a lot of us got baptized when we were younger. We didn't really know what we were doing. When you go down in the water, you identify with the death of Jesus. Amen. And when you go down in the water, you buried with him in baptism. That's what the world tells, the world tells us. And when we get back up out of the water... We uh, identify when Jesus rose from the dead and now we're living in a newness of life. But if you're not baptized, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. Amen. The thief on the cross, he didn't get baptized in the physical. Come on. A lot of people are putting this thing on you and saying, you have to get baptized. If you didn't get baptized, you're not saved. No, you're not a Christian. No, that's not true. Amen. So a lot of us, like I'm saying, with my situation, it was three times. Both times, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing it because people told me to do it. But the last time when I got baptized, I know what I was doing. I had confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. The other two times when I got baptized, I didn't confess him as Lord and Savior. I did not know nothing about you got, you know, you got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. I didn't know nothing about that. I was just doing it because people told me to do it. But when I did it the last time, I had confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. I know what I was doing. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. Don't force the children to get baptized. You got to make sure that, yes, you know, you can dedicate a child when, when a couple months old or, or, you know, one or two years old. But when we're talking about baptism, uh, having them go down in the water and come back up, they need to know why they're doing it. Because if not, then you're going to have the, you know, when they get older, they're going to be keep baptizing because they don't know. Amen. So, like we're talking about the thief. Many of us, we grew up in the church. We come to the front of the altar. We may have said a sinner's prayer. And didn't really mean it from my heart. Because Romans 10 verse 9 through 13 tell us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. <coughs> excuse me. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's important that you examine yourself to make sure you're in the faith. Because a lot of us, like I said, we were raised in the church. It's people right now. I mean, I was, in the, I was serving God and wasn't even saved. Did not even confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I was in the church. I was ushering. I was doing different things in the choir. And did not even confess, did not know that I wasn't even saved. And yes, that's good to do works. Because when you get saved, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 10. That we are saved by grace through faith. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So yes, when you get saved, yes, you're going to do works. But doing works don't mean that you're saved. Ushering in the church, come on, singing in the choir, 
getting up in the pulpit, reading scriptures, giving a word. That does not mean that you have a relationship with God. And that's why he said, Matthew 7, many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out devils and done many wonderful things? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. So you have to examine yourself and ask yourself, I am a, am I a thief? Did I come through God another way besides Jesus Christ? And the reason why this is heavy in, in my spirit today is because there's so many things going on. So many people are saying things. It's all these, the same, it's all these different ways to God. Come on, you got Steve Harvey was saying something about his more, he believes there's more than one way to God, more than one way to heaven. And even Oprah Winfrey saying that. And then now you have the Pope came out and said, Mary is the bridge to God. No, Mary is not the bridge to God. Jesus Christ is the bridge. Jesus Christ is the way. According to John 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man can come to the Father unless they come by me. There is no other way to God. There is no other way to be saved. And that's through the man, Jesus Christ. He is the propitiation for our sins. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a vehicle to get him here. And yes, she's blessed, blessed among women. But she's not the gap to Jesus Christ. I need you all to find that. There's a video where the Pope said it. She's the bridge to God. No, she's not. And then he said something else that when people die from the coronavirus, if they die alone, Mary is right there to comfort them. No, she's not. Mary is st body still in the grave. Come on here. Her spirit, when she died, might have went to be with God, went to heaven to be with God, but her body is still down in the grave. Just like so many other people that die in the Lord. Don't be deceived, my brothers and my sisters. If you're trusting in Mary for salvation, you're a thief. John chapter 10. Jesus said it. Let me read it for you. Verily, verily, verse 1. I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbing up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opened it and the sheep hear his voice and he called it his own sheep by name and leaded them out. Come on. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. What voice are you following? In verse 5 it says, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him before they know not the voice of strangers. What voice are you listening to? There's so many voices out there. You got my voice. You got your voice talking to yourself. Come on now. The, do the go God is talking to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. Come on. The devil is talking. Come on. He's an imitator. He comes and tries to imitate the voice of God. Sometimes you think you're hearing God and you're not. It's the enemy. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. With Eve, he came and he, and he, and he spoke to her. In Genesis chapter 3, what voice are you listening to? If you're trying to go up another way, and this is what Jesus was talking to, to, to the Jews in John chapter 10. Because see, the thing with the Jews, they, were, they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Jesus came here the legal way. He came through the birth of a woman. They didn't, they never, they, most of them, they never accepted him. They say he was the son of fornication. They say he had a devil. But Jesus came the legal way. He came the way that we came, through the womb. Come on here. He can't, come on. But the Jews, they were trying to go up another way. They were trying to keep the law. You know, they, they, they claim that they were Abraham's seed. Come on, even John the Baptist said, ah, don't come and say that you're Abraham. You, you got Abraham for your father. Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. John told him that in, in, John, in Matthew chapter 3. Because see, this is the situation with the Jews. 
They were thinking they had all re legal rights. But in some of the cases, they were wrong because when the Messiah came to them, they did not believe that he was the Messiah. So back in the days with the sheepfold, in the evening, all the shepherds who lived in that town would bring their sheep to the sheepfold and turn them in for the night. They would entrust them to the porter who kept the sheep. Then they would go to their homes for the night. The next morning, the shepherds would identify themselves to the porter and he would let them in the door to get their sheep. It's the same thing here what Jesus was saying. Jesus Christ is the door. And he said it in the world, if I am the door, if any man entering by me, they'll be saved and go in and out and find green pastures. You can't get into heaven no other way but through Jesus Christ. Come on. Mary ain't the way. Buddha ain't the way. Calling on the name of Allah ain't going to get you in there. Jesus is the way. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name on the heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And it's at the name of Jesus. Come on, that's Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no other way. So don't be listening to, to the Pope talking about when people die. Come on. Mary's right there comforting them. When people die of the coronavirus, Mary's right there comforting them No, and pray for them. No, she's not. She's not. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort. Because Jesus said in the world, when the comforter comes, he would reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The comforter is there to comfort people. Not Mary. Come on, they also have a demonic movie came, coming out. On Good Friday. I'm telling you, the enemy tries to, to think everything that God has. Corrupt everything God has. It's a demonic movie called The Unholy. And there's this young lady that's supposed to get her powers from Mary to heal people. Mary don't give nobody no powers to heal nothing. Mary's body is still in the grave. Jesus Christ has given us power and authority, not Mary. You need to be careful with a lot of stuff that's going on. A lot of stuff is coming out here. She claimed to be doing miracles because Mary gave her power. The unholy is coming out. Come on, Good Friday. The Good Friday when Jesus died, suffered. Now you have a movie coming on Good Friday, a demonic movie. I advise you don't go look at that. Because all of this, all this is blasphemy. Because Mary can't give nobody powers. She's not there to pray nobody. To pray and, and, and comfort anybody. She died. Her body's still in the grave. She will be resurrected with all, with all of us. She ain't going up to heaven. You know, come on, her body ain't been resurrected yet. Jesus Christ been resurrected. He's the, he's the bridge to God. He is the only doorway into heaven. So if you if you you have to pay attention. You need to pay attention. You need to go back. Ask the Holy Spirit if you truly save. And if you have confessed Jesus, He will bring you back. He will take you back and show you. If you truly save, if you have truly confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you truly believe in your heart, because this belief has to come from the heart. You can't just believe in your mind that Jesus that Jesus is God. It has to come from the heart. Come on, my brothers and my sisters. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, come on, shall be saved. So Jesus was telling the Jews this. The sheepfold represented the nation of Israel. Come on. And Jesus was telling them that he came in by the door. He came in the legal way. He came and he died for us. Legally.
to how? How's your relationship? God sent his son born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. That's why you don't have to keep the law. I'm not saying that you don't keep the Ten Commandments. I'm not saying and not, nobody tell you to go out there and steal. Nobody tell you to go out there and bear false witness. Come on. But you don't have to keep the law to be saved. Come on. You should be keeping the law because you love God. Because there's a consequence for some of these sins. You go out there and you kill somebody. Yeah. Then you get caught. You got to do the time. They say you commit the crime. You do the time. But, but the Lord was telling, you know, back here, but the Lord was telling them too. People, they were trying to be, keep the law through circumcision and keep all these laws. Come on. Who can keep all these laws? That's why Jesus Christ, he's a fulfillment of the Lord. That's why he came and he died for us. We can't keep all these laws. You know how many, and the laws was given for the Jews, but you know how many laws they had to keep back in the Bible? You read the first five books of the Bible, they got so much laws and stuff in there. It's called a Pentateuch. There's so much laws they had to keep. They can do it. That's why Jesus Christ came. He is the fulfillment of the law. So Jesus was telling them. And in verse 10, from chapter 10, verse 27, he says, this, I am the door. We can't come up no other way. Doing good works ain't going to save you. And in chapter, John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We got to go through the son to get to the father. You want to have, you want eternal life? You got to believe in the son of God. Believe and confess him with your mouth. There's no other way. There is no other way. So my friends, are you a thief? A lot of people going out there and they, 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 um, they're buying the degrees. You know, people going online and paying some money and getting licensed. Come on. Getting licensed as a minister, getting licensed as an apostle. Come on. Where's the authenticity in that? Where is it? Did God call you? You can't be too quick to run out there and say you're a minister. Say you're an apostle. I'm a prophet. Did God call you to that office? Or are you, are you a thief that you go through the other door to get those, those credentials? Mm. You got to think about that. That's why you got to be very careful who you're listening to, the voices. Somebody send you an email. Hey, I got a word for you. Send, send, send me some money. I'll give you a word. Really? I get them emails a lot. I listen to the words sometimes and sometimes I'll be like, okay, this apply to me. No, this don't apply to me. I'm, I, you know, I'm not sending you no money for you to give me no word. I can sit at the feet of Jesus. And God going to give me the same word for free. I'm not saying that you don't sow a seed. Because something that God may tell you to sow a seed. But you got to be careful with that. When people say sow a seed. And in seven days you get a miracle. Seven days your things turn around. Seven days. Be careful with that. Or three days. Be careful with that. Some of these people they get they didn't get the credentials from God. They're a thief. They got it the wrong way. They got it the illegal way. And yes, they may have went through something to get it, but still, in the eyes of God, it's illegal. That's why a lot of people, that's why the Lord said in Matthew 7, many going to say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Come on. Done many wonderful works, cast out devils, and he going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. Not saying that God don't know everything because he's omniscient. He knows everything. But when he's talking about knowing you, that personal relationship is what he's talking about. Because a lot of people out there doing works and don't have no relationship with God. 
have never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. Like I said before, you could be in the church, working in the church, but they in, uh, don't have no relationship with God. That ain't going to get you into heaven doing the works. You got to, your name got to be written in the Lamb's book of life. We're talking about a one-on-one -on -one relation, personal relationship with God. We're not talking about religion. This is a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with God. So you need to examine yourself and ask yourself, I am, am I a thief? Did I get my credentials illegally? Because a lot of people grew up in the church, walked to the front of the altar, said a prayer, or said a prayer in their own home, or they, their parents might have lead them to have them say a prayer, but they didn't really mean it from the heart. You got to confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart. That means if you have any doubt tonight, any doubt, any question, you may have backslidden. God loves you. He said he's married to the backsliders. He loved the backsliders. He said he will heal them of their backsliding ways. He's talking to the nation of Israel. Because you know the nation, they were always going back and forth. One minute they serving God, God would raise up judges and kings. And then they would listen. And then after the judges or the king died, they'd go back into sin. They were back and forth, back and forth. Just like a lot of us. One minute we in the church, we got one foot to the plow and we looking back. One minute we serving God, coming to church. Oh God, I will serve you. I'll follow you wherever you tell me to go. And then stuff, stuff happening and we backslide. We stop going to church. We stop reading the word. Stop praying. And I'm not saying, I know there's still a pandemic there. So here, so a lot of churches are not open. So a lot of people are not in the church. But even before the pandemic, there were people been, been, been falling away from the church. Backsliding. Don't see the purpose and the seriousness of their soul. You got to think about your soul. If you die right now, where would you spend eternity? Where? Because it's heaven or hell. There ain't no in between. There ain't no purgatory. There ain't no soul sleep. It's either or. Either place. Either heaven or either hell. So, but you tonight you need to ask yourself or today, wherever you are, ask yourself this question. Am I a thief? Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. He will show you. Say, Lord, Holy Spirit, did I really confess Jesus? God, did I really confess your son as Lord and Savior? He will answer. He will let you, he will let you know. He will confirm it for you. Because in Romans 8, it tells us, he that have the son have life. He that does not have the son does not have life, but the wrath of God abided in him. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Because when you confess Jesus, when you're truly born again, the Holy Spirit came to live in you. Holy Spirit is in you. So tonight, my brothers and my sisters, that's the word. I pray that you seek the Lord. Make your calling an election sure. Because time is winding up. The rapture of the church is imminent. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. Well, we know he's going to come back. It can happen anytime. It can happen tonight. It can happen next week, next year. We don't know. It's imminent. It means anytime he can come and rapture the church. Come on, we, this is a week of Passover. The Jews celebrate Passover this week. And they do their cleansing. They, they go through their house and they get rid of 11. Come on, back in the Bible, back in Exodus. You can read it from Exodus chapter 11, chapter 11 to chapter 14. When the Lord told him about putting the blood on the door, because I'm going to come back in the week with that, about Passover. The significance of the blood on the doorpost and the lentil. But the Jews are celebrating Passover this week. Seven days is Passover for them. They can't have no leaven in the house. Leaven represents, you know, sin. 
They, they, they try to get rid of sin, get rid of things in the house. But the only person that can cleanse you from sin is Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that can cleanse you from your sin. You can do whatever you want. Wash yourself every day. Come on. You can pray a, a million prayers every day. The only thing that can cleanse you from sin is the blood of Jesus. Your relationship with God. When you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins is washed away. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. God cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember it. So we can wash ourselves up as much as we want, change our clothes. That's good. But that don't make you right with God. That's not going to get rid of your sin. It might clean you up on the outside, but on the inside, you need the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. To cleanse you from all sin. To cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. So tonight. Amen. Where I am it's night. It's 8 o'clock. So I just pray that God will. Touch you guys hearts and. Save you for real. Amen. Because. When you stand before God. You don't want to hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. But you want to hear him say, well done. That good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few. Come on up. Let me make you rule over many. God bless you. Stay in the faith and stay encouraged. <laughs>